Okay. So uh, I will return to this uh, uh, plot uh, every time we understand more physics. Here, for, for the moment, uh, let's see. This is the coupling of uh, sigma um, meson to lambda hyperon, and this is the coupling of sigma meson to the sigma hyperon. And uh, the inequality we obtained from just uh, SU3 symmetry implies that uh, parameter space is given by this blue shaded area and the Nijmenkin soft core potential value is here. And we will go on now and uh, see how we can constrain this parameter space. What? Sorry? Is that little point with the off? This one? No, the one in the Oh, forget the inset for the moment. No, no, no. Forget for the moment the inset, please. What? What? What's the problem? No, no, it's, it's your cursor. It looks like an Yeah. My cursor. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we want to vary the parameters. The question is how much we can vary uh, the parameters. I mean, how, how we can proceed further, you know. And uh, the issue is the following. In the, in the case of sigma-lambda interaction, we know that there are lambda hypernuclei and lambda hyperon is bound to the nucleus. So there must be some amount of attraction in the hyperonic sector in order to bind the lambda particle to a nucleus. On the other hand, we have to have enough repulsion to produce heavy, massive neutron stars with two solar mass uh, maximum mass. That means that uh, we can uh, bracket uh, the pr our parameter space by on one side looking at the hypernuclei, on the other side at looking at massive neutron stars. So what we did is, uh, this is mostly Eric Van Dalen I mentioned uh, before, Van Dalen College and myself recently in Physics Letters B published work um, where Eric basically computed uh, for us starting from the exactly the same functional that uh, I showed you, uh, lambda hypernuclei, several lambda hypernuclei. Here we have oxygen 17 with one lambda um, uh, particle, uh, calcium 41, um, carbon 41 and calcium 49. And uh, here you see uh, Mm. These are basically the experimental values of uh, uh, first levels in this uh, lambda level in this nucleus, and this is what our functional reproduces. These are the binding energies that we obtain and RMS radii for uh, these particles. Is that carbon 14? That's calcium. That's calcium. Or is that calcium 41? I don't know. I mean, you know better. I don't know. So, so this one, this one is. Uh, so this is this is the original nucleus without any, you know, without uh, any. So it's the, it's the same nucleus. It has the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Okay. okay? So, okay so, so this is forty, right? No, is it how much? No. This is probably has 20 protons, this one, right. and 40. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Z hasn't changed. So there is a typo here. So this is a t there is a typo here, okay? Because these are the same. But I said calcium, right? Did I say carbon? It's calcium. It's definitely calcium. Okay, uh, so um, this is the density distribution as a function of uh, radius from the center of the nucleus, and you see here the lambda particle, lambda particle, and neutrons and protons. Okay. Now, uh, uh, what we did, we optimized, uh, so basically we repeated the computation for different uh, couplings, uh, sigma-lambda, varied sigma-lambda couplings, 
Of course, these calculations are bland, blind against uh, variations of sigma sigma. And by varying sigma lambda, we obtain this line, this red line. So basically, now the parameter space is reduced. Uh, so we will try to stick to this line. And the next, in the next step, what we will do, we will use the uh, massive neutron stars to see uh, where, which part of this line is relevant to our physics. Okay. So now uh, you use the same functional and uh, uh, compute the equation of state. This is the equation of state. Uh, blue line is the nuclear equation of state. Red line is the hyperonic nuclear equation of state. And then you can try to vary the parameters and they, you, you see that you can essentially cover this range by different uh, equations of state if you var vary your parameters. Well, this is an intermediate result. I, I, I want just to show here that uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, this is the zero temperature case. Uh, abundances of different particles uh, as a function of density. Uh, you have neutrons, protons, and hyperons basically all have about 10% 10, 10 of abundances in the matter. So, sorry, go back. So you're already producing the sigma at one and a half? This is, this is very standard. OK, uh, now um, this is the mass radius curve uh, for those equations of state. And you see that uh, we are able to go above two solar masses uh, for certain values of uh, this uh, sigma, sigma parameter. So sigma lambda is uh, fixed already from hypernuclei. And we vary our sigma-sigma coupling. And you see for certain values of sigma-sigma uh, coupling, we get above two solar masses, but not much. But anyway, uh, part of the parameter space now can be excluded by uh, requiring that uh, masses as large as two solar masses are obtained. And, sorry, you might be planning to address this later in your talk. But from what you and I were discussing these things, the other aspect of this, of course, is the radiance. Larger than some of the values that people are coming up with. Right. And how, uh, how much, I mean, so I, I guess you can get a radius of 12 kilometers if you happen to have exactly the right uh, mass or something, but how much can you play with this? You know, if instead of trying to adjust the mass, you're trying to adjust the radius, can you get it to go up and down by a kilometer? Uh, so, so you see, the, the point is the following. Until this point, you see, all the curves coincide. Be why? Because we don't have hyperons. So up to this point, everything is decided by the nuclear equation of state and the fit of the functional to the parameters. And um, so let me see if I have where I have those here. And this, this, is, this, uh, this is decided basically by uh, the symmetry energy, which is, um, let's see, is 3230 here. And we learned in the previous talks that uh, this is at the larger side of this, of this parameter. So if you go down in symmetry energy, you will probably also reduce uh, your uh, radius. This is, this is what uh, at least I learned from uh, Stefano's talk, right? And if you do that, can you still get to two solar masses with hyperons? I don't know. I, uh, this is uh, my nuclear equation of state is fixed. And it fixed uh, in, a, in such a way that it reproduces to high accuracy properties of finite nuclei. If I would change this, I have to do all the refitting again. You know, so uh, we, we don't do this type of, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We, we just, uh, at half, half the nuclear saturation density, we uh, put a crust on, on top of uh, the equation of state to compute these curves. To compute these curves, somewhere here, you have some standard crust, Negele-Votoran or something like that. Yeah, I, I've been asking myself also that question. I'm not sure why it's, I mean, it's not so large. I mean, it's not uh, something uh, ridiculously large, but this is, this is in the range, in the upper range of what you have seen before, right? So what, what is the density, how um, strong is the density dependence of the coupling constraints? 
you have a plot somewhere that shows how no, much no, 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 not, not here, not here, okay. not here. But uh, you know, this density uh, dependence of the couplings uh, were fitted to the Dirac Bruckner calculations by the, by others. I mean, nuclear part we don't touch. So they do microscopic calculation in Dirac Bruckner, and then they fit the mean field mm -hmm. to the Dirac Bruckner calculation, which includes correlations beyond mean field. So essentially, the correlations beyond mean field are included in the density dependent coupling constant. This is one of the methods. It's on the market more, more than 10 years, 15 years perhaps. Okay. So then, uh, so uh, now let us look at the inset. It's, it's here, this, this part of the diagram. And uh, this red line is the constraint coming from uh, hypernuclei. This uh, blue shaded region is just SU3 symmetry. And now um, we have varied uh, along this line the coupling of, uh, uh, sorry, we have varied in this, uh, along this line, along the red line, the, this coupling. And we have found that at this point, uh, the masses become to the right of this point, this uh, black square, the masses are too, too low to uh, reproduce. I mean, the masses come out too low. That, that, that means that we don't reproduce the sol two solar masses. So essentially, we are left basically from here to here. This is our parameter space. I don't know. It came, didn't came out very well. So uh, from ha lambda hypernuclei, we have this number. and. Uh, from neutron stars, we have this number for this coupling constant. Uh, so, if you go back to the previous slide, uh, you chose a specific value of. Uh, okay, you, you, you value yeah. the value of x sigma so sigma. Sigma lambda is specific value that comes from hypernuclei, optimally fitted to hypernuclei, and then I vary sigma sigma. Yes, you so know, the neutron star observation is really pushing you to the lower limit of x sigma sigma, right? Yes. 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 So um, basically, it's it's along this line, the, this small parameter. So the parameter space is quite constrained for this particular density functional. I think this 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 exercise is useful in a sense that, quite generally, independent what uh, type of uh, uh, density functional you would use for hypernuclear matter, you must be aware that you have to fit the hypernuclei, and this will always require some uh, attraction in your hypernuclear functional in order to bind the lambda particle. On the other hand, you have to have enough repulsion in your hypernuclear density functional in order to reproduce very massive neutron stars. So nature gives us two different, completely different systems which uh, somehow constrain the uh, amount of attraction or repulsion as you wish inside uh, in, 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 your, in any given hyper de hypernuclear density functional. You can take any other one. You have to do the same, and uh, you will find that it's constrained. So to understand the robustness of the density, you said in response to Linda, you just tested the start hitting hyperons at like one and a half times density. Yes. I didn't say that. I, I said this, these pictures are, are pretty typical. So, yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. So it's true. Yeah. So yeah, so. I, I, is it true that this means you have also not very much room to play with situations where the hyperon, hyperon or hyperon nuclear interaction becomes very repulsive above nuclear density? Because if I have absolute freedom, maybe I can go in that direction to help sustain extra mass. Yes, you can. Uh, ad hoc, you can do that. Ad hoc, we don't know anything about hypernuclear sector uh, much above the nuclear saturation density. Well, I, but I guess what I was wondering is, given that you have hyperons appearing at, at comparatively low densities, it's not like three times nuclear density, does that mean that the freedom to add repulsive high density is seriously constrained by the nuclear data? No, nuclear data doesn't constrain anything above the saturation density. 
I mean, uh, this, is, uh, this is actually, this A1 is a soft equation of state where you produce early hyperons, but for a stiffer parameterization, you get actually hyperons above twice the, uh, satur uh, twice the saturation density. So I, I would rather believe this, this calculation. I mean, we need also, we obtain massive stars in the case of, uh, you know, stiff parameterizations. I mean, if you go to the mass radius curve, those plots that actually agree with a two solar mass neutron star, essentially hyperons are appearing at very high density, right? You know, if I say that I want the two solar mass, the only curve that roughly agrees with the data is the red curve. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The red curve, the threshold density for the appearance of hyperons is maybe yeah, somewhere here. Five times nuclear density. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's uh, so. Uh, I mean, there is no matching between this one. I can't tell you exactly now the so parameters. All of these models, all these the, models right. that you're showing here, are ruled out by the two solar mass object. You have to push these hyperons even further out to get that red curve. Well, I mean, you know, it it might happen that trace amount of hyperons will not affect your equation of state. It's not, you know, if if it's really branching off here. I can't say that really hyperons appear at this point. You might have trace amounts of hyperons a yeah, bit below, you right know. So but okay, the trace amount is, is no is no hyperons, right? I mean, yeah. okay. If it doesn't affect the equation of state, then we don't care about it. You know, okay, Prakash hyperons. might not he's not here. Yeah, for yeah cooling, but uh, for cooling, for cooling it's a separate he needs three percent or something. Right. But our theories are nowhere close to, you know, predicting trace amounts with any accuracy. We just can say around this density of mass the factor. My question is, because this massive neutron star is constraining the threshold density for hyperons at four times nuclear density, mm -hmm. the connection between nuclear physics constraints on hypernuclei and nucleon-hyperon coupling from um, neutron stars, the connection is very tenuous because you have these density-dependent coupling constants. Mm -hmm. right? You're constraining coupling constant at four times nuclear density using one strategy, and you're constraining coupling constants at nuclear density using a different strategy. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that one can say that you, know, you can actually conclude something about coupling constants for nuclear and hyperon of relevance to hypernuclei from, uh, mass, from the mass of neutron structure. Well, essentially what you are saying, we don't know the density dependence. Is it, yeah, is so it what you are saying? Density dependence, you know, we don't know the density dependence, so there's no easy way to relate uh, these constraints to hypernuclear physics. Uh, sure, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, uh, you know, uh, any, any Bruckner calculation, Dirac Bruckner calculation, is an extrapolation what, from what we know. Actually, it's, it's, it's a bit better because uh, we know the phase shifts. Mm -hmm which are at energies uh, which correspond to higher energies than nuclear saturation density. We know uh, uh, Stefano showed the phase shifts which go up to 600 MeV. That's for nucleon nucleon. Nucleon nucleon, yeah. But we are talking about nuclear hyperon. Yeah, nuclear hyperon, you know, what you do, you say just uh, there is, as you see, three symmetry, and I imagine if there is a strange quark inside the hyperon, it doesn't participate in the interaction, so interactions are reduced by two-third, you know, if you, by factor two-three, that's uh, two-third. It's, uh, it's this SU3 argument for the couplings, Noth nothing more. You know, if you know how nucleon-nucleon interaction is, you just take out that strange quark of the, out of the game and say, okay, the interaction is two-third of what you have for nucleons. I mean, okay, I mean, that's, that's what we can do. I'm trying to say yeah. today what we can do. And, uh, uh, you know, for me, for me personally, it was nice to see that, uh, you know, using hypernuclei and these heavy neutron stars, you can actually constrain your parameter space to something. You know, we, you can really constrain to some narrow range and say, okay, this is, in this particular model, I, I'm not arguing this is very best. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I have done myself micro calculations and uh, these relativistic mean field models are not my favorite, but this is what we can do at this moment, right? But just that one more step. If tomorrow Scott Rasmussen discovers a 2.400 solar mass neutron stuff, yes. would you be able to say, well, you know what, hyperons are not dead because it happens at a 4 times nuclear 
Yes, probably. Probably. Probably we, we cannot do that. I mean, it's, it's, it's really very hard. It's very hard. Also for quark matter, it's very hard. You can't... It, it, it. I mean, there, there is no parameter space anymore. 